Okay, so we can start. So I'm Jeff, this is Mark. Um, we don't have to talk to the camera, but um, yeah, so, so, so I already ran the question by you. What do you think happens after this life? And uh, you had said you're a little unsure about it, but uh, do you have any any beliefs about it at all? Like, you know, it's really kind of. I feel like it's kind of hard to just assume what happens. You know, because you don't know. Yeah. You know, so trying to predict something that you don't know is pretty hard. Hard do, to do. do. Do you have any um, wishful thinking about it? Not like what you hope I just, happens. I mean, I hope that everything that you learn about it, that you know, you you move on to a better place, and that's a spiritual life. You know, that you go to heaven, and that's a, that's what everybody wish for. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, does it really happen? I don't know if we ever know. Yeah. yeah. You know, not before that time. Yeah. That's just the way I feel. So, um, uh, growing up, did you have like did you have people tell teaching you about it? Oh yes. You, oh, yes. you were involved in the church. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Did. So, uh, what do you think the church? Uh, have you been involved in church since? Since uh, uh, your parents' church, we'll say. Since you know, since I've been on the road, it's kind of been on and off, yeah. back and forth. You know. Yeah. Because I am on the road, and a lot of time it requires us to be working over the weekend. Okay. So. Um, it sounds like you have an awareness of like what church teaches about it or what the Bible teaches. Like what, what do you believe um, that, like, let's say I would, let's say you were the pastor of the church you grew up in. Mm -hmm. What do you think your pastor would say? Like, what does the church teach about uh, going, you know, like life after death? Well, basically they teach you, you know, that there's a heaven and a hell. That if you live your life right and, you know, according to, according to Christ, that you will make it to heaven and it'll be a better place. Yeah. And then they teach you about hell, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, um, if I had to try to convince somebody, I would just convince them on what I've learned. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that, I think that would be the fairest thing to do. Yeah. I can't I can't uh, uh, let someone lead somebody into believe something that I really don't know. So I would have to just try to, uh, you know, go from what yeah. I've learned over now, the years. Now, if you think about it, the pastor and your church, where did they get the information? Uh, I would say he got the information from reading the Bible and learning himself. Yeah. So, so, so like ultimately, um, maybe it's a question of is the Bible the authority, right? Right. Like, would you say the Bible is the authority for you? You know, um, as I get older, no. I'm, I'm, you know, you hear so many things and you, you learn so many things. So, so it's, it's, I'm kind of curious. That's a big question mark right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You know, so growing uh, you got up, different you, versions, different uh -huh. versions of the Bible, and you know, you just start to learn different stuff, and it makes you kind of like, you know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of hard. So to, you have your questions about uh, how accurate the Bible is, or what? right, different versions and stuff. The like different that, versions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, have you read the Bible much for yourself, like at any point in your life? It sounds like you haven't. Yes, I have. Lately, I have. Or, I have. Yeah. I have. And and some of these, uh, we'll say voices or what you know, like people that are saying the Bible is not accurate or whatever, is is that from like the inner? Like, are you getting that from a certain place or just just no, in general? It, it comes from it, it comes from. All over the place, you know. A lot of it is from social media, it's from different pastors, you know, that I guess try to be, I don't know if they're trying to be above other pastors or whatever it is, but, you know, you get to questioning those guys, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, looking at different pastors, like, okay, is this guy a yeah. real pastor, a real minister or not? Yeah. You know, is he an ordained minister? It's hard to tell. Yeah. A lot of them was, I don't know, I guess they're looking for fame or whatever it is, but. Yeah. Some of I mean, you question, you know, mm -hmm. even mean, some of the, even some of the biggest names, you know what I mean? Yeah. I hate to say this, but uh, for instance, I'm just going to say it like sure. T.D. Jakes, for instance. Uh -huh. I grew up watching this man for years and years and stuff like that. So now it's it's questionable to me, like, OK, was he doing this for the fame or was he really 
you know, is he really an ordained minister? I, it's kind of yeah. from the stuff that he's been involved in and stuff that we learn and it's like questionable, you know, so it's kind of hard to did, tell. Did you start watching him before he got so big? Yep, I did. Yeah. I sure did. I sure did. Yeah. And everything seemed to be real. He seemed to be the man at that point. Yeah. You know, uh, Joe Osteen, for instance. Yeah. I remember during the floods where he had a church locked up and people was wondering why he wouldn't let people inside the church, you know yeah. what I mean, and stuff like that. So now I'm starting to look, I'm like, okay, why would he not do that if he's... You know, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that the guys. No, really, I, it just make it's questionable, you know. Yeah. So it's it's, you know, when you start learning and seeing stuff like that, it gets hard to uh, determine. Hard to the trust guy. them. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Exactly. You know. So you know, it it, it makes you wonder. I, I think it even got a lot of people uh, against going to church now because now they wondering, okay, if I'm if I'm paying my tithes, is it going in his pocket? Ah. Uh, you know what I mean? They just. A lot of people lose an interest just in going to church. Yeah. Different churches because they just, you know, it's so much stuff, so much crazy stuff going on. Yeah. Pastors, you know, somebody's name will come up and they're molesting kids and they're doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It's terrible, you know, so it's hard yeah. to. And, I, and I I've, heard a, trust trust. I've heard a lot of that, like in uh, among Catholics, they've, they've fallen away from the Catholic Church because the priests, so many priests are. You know, exactly, found exactly. guilty of that, and, uh -huh. and but it does. It's not limited to Catholics. It could be, uh, right. you know, other churches too, uh -huh. and uh, uh -huh. yeah. And then those big names, you wonder, they get so big that uh, I don't know if they start thinking they're above reproach. You know, no exactly. one can question them, exactly. and, and then they start. It's, it, maybe they're surrounded by a bunch of yes people, uh -huh. and, and uh -huh. so yeah. now let me ask you, because how would you feel? to go, say for instance, like Joe Osteen, how would you feel to go into a church? You know, it'll probably, I don't know if you've ever been, but it'll be an experience, I'm sure, but yeah. can you believe everything that he's saying to you? How well, would you feel about that? I mean, that? I have heard his preaching. Okay. Here, here's, what I wanted, here's what I want to say is, you know, um, so, so it, it, the way that you know what they're doing wrong, mm -hmm. is it, what they're doing is wrong, right? is you have the standard of the Bible to know it. Uh -huh. In other words, Jesus taught about like feed the poor and take care of the needy. And then if if they're not, and if they're just taking care of themselves, we know uh -huh. that they're not doing what Jesus taught, right? Uh -huh. But the ultimate authority is not their preaching. The ultimate authority is God's word, the Bible. See what uh -huh. I'm saying? So, so, um, so that's why I asked, do you read the Bible much on your own? Because yeah. apparently you, you you have enough knowledge about it to know that what those preachers are doing is wrong. It just doesn't mm -hmm. make sense, right? And then, and then a lot of times when you're reading the Bible on your own, there's a lot of stuff that you don't understand. Yeah, there sure is. You know, it's a lot that's, you know. And so like, we do need the pastors. We need people to, you know, let, that it, like it's their... It's their life's work is to take the the mm. Bible, which is a huge. Mm. It's actually mm. a library of books because there's a lot right. of books within it. To take that whole thing and make sense of it, right? Absolutely. Um, and uh, so I would, my suggestion would be to say, read the Bible for yourself, with the understanding that there's going to be things in there that you don't understand, right? And but also there's going to be some things that you do understand. Mm. I'm sure that. You know that's true right absolutely and follow those things so so in my experience like i follow what i do know and then and then i keep reading and some of the things that i don't know start to make sense after i've followed the things i do know right but but i don't not read the bible just because i can't understand everything because it's you know like there's a lot of history and culture and language differences you know that we have to be aware of to understand everything mm -hmm. but there's enough um in the bible for a person to follow it if you have the mindset that okay maybe i'm not going to understand everything but i'm but what i do understand i'm going to be obedient to does that make sense yes yeah it does. so so uh when i when i i have heard joel olstein's preaching mm -hmm. and um from what i from from what I read in the Bible for myself, most of what he says is pretty true, uh -huh. but he leaves a lot of things out. It's kind of like 
you know, in the Bible, it talks about the, the gospel. You heard mm -hmm. that term before, the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. That means good news. Right. Okay. So the good news is that Jesus came and, you know, like we're, Jesus came and died for our sins, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he's our savior. That's good news. But it doesn't make sense unless we realize I'm a sinner, right? Absolutely. And I need to be saved. And without Absolutely. Jesus, I'm not saved. Right. And I would be headed for hell without him. And and so I know the good news is not just the good news. The good news also consists of the bad news that nobody wants to talk about, right. you know, because right. it's bad news. Mm -hmm. Who likes to talk mm -hmm. about bad news? Mm -hmm. And so Joel Osteen is like Mr. Positivity, right? So he's always talking about like, you can live your best life now and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but he's leaving out kind of the bad news. Um, and he might say it once in a while, right, but he, right, he sure right. doesn't emphasize it, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so I kind of feel like he's, his ministry and other ministries like his, um, TD, T, TD. TD Jakes yeah. mm -hmm. is one of them also. They're called um, prosperity preaching, where mm -hmm. it's kind of like making it sound like all you got to do is put your faith in Jesus and life will be right. rosy. Right, after all, after all. <laughs> and, and when I read the Bible for myself, I, you know, I read the Gospels, which are pretty easy to understand. And Jesus said, those who follow me will be persecuted. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait a minute, that's not what T.D. Jakes is preaching, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. And, and so, so I have to say, oh, there, there's something wrong there. Is he just trying to get people into his church and get their money? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, maybe he got, maybe he and others like him started with good motives, but then... You know, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil, right? Well, I don't think uh, only non-Christians are, you know, susceptible to that. Even Christians can get carried away with the money and the power Absolutely. and the fame. Absolutely. So once these preachers get to be like so important and everyone around them is saying yes to whatever they do, I think they can get corrupt too, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I'm happy with having a local pastor at my church where I can listen to him and and mm -hmm. read the Bible for myself and discern whether what he's saying is pretty accurate, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, at the same time, I do know of some preachers who are like nationally known and they're on TV and stuff like that who um, preach really close to what the Bible is teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lot better when me growing up uh, the pastor at my church was a friend of my family, my mother and father. So I actually would have been to his house. I would go over to his house and talk to him. So I, I kind of knew him on a personal level. Yeah. So that makes a lot more difference. You know, when you know somebody on a personal level, you know, if you, you know that you can trust them. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know how yeah. they're living. So it makes it a lot easier to follow somebody that you trust. Yeah. Somebody that you know and you trust. Yeah. Uh, when you just go to a random church, you don't really know nothing about the pastor, the minister at all. So it's like, yeah. you know, sometimes you might hear the sermon that he preaching and you like just, you kind of just there to listen, but not really paying attention because you're wondering if, you know, just, if, you know, if, if he even know what he's talking about. Like, yeah. You know, so <laughs> it's kind of hard, you know, sometimes. Yeah. Kind of tough. Do you, um, this pastor that you, you got to know really well, did you did you feel like he lived up to, like he practiced what he preached? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, that's Me a blessing. Up, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm an old school guy. This, this you know, pastor was an old school guy. So he just, I've never seen any anything anything bad with this this man no yeah i mean yeah. but i know, you know the bible too. says every no one's perfect so right. he's going to have some faults, right, but, right right but nothing you know mm -hmm. the, the, and, the, and my nothing. mother was an ordained minister as well so mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah so that so, made it a lot easier so mark do you when i say like do you believe like what do you think happens after we die like the bible does say there's a heaven and a hell and a judgment day mm -hmm. If you, if all of that, if you die today, God forbid, you know, but would you be ready for heaven? What What do you think would be the, what do you think would be the, the verdict, I guess? The judgment day is, means there's a judge, right? Right. Do I think I'll be ready? I think I will. Because, uh, you know, you learn that God knows your heart. He knows what's on your heart. 
for mm -hmm. you know for as me being judged by my heart yeah i'll be ready yeah because oh, you have yeah. a good heart yeah oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah so I, i'm gonna give you a little good person test okay 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 so um how many lies have you told in your life oh my god a lot of them okay <laughs> <laughs> so what would you be called if you told lies you can call a lawyer. Okay, I mean, and I'm not. I'm not saying that. Right. You're saying that about yourself, right? right? Absolutely, okay. absolutely, <laughs> I'm, yeah, absolutely. So it just makes who, sense. Who haven't? Right. I, I'll, I'll say the same thing about right. me. Right. Exactly. Have you ever taken anything that didn't belong to you? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. What sure, would you be sure. called then? Uh, you'd be called a thief. A thief. Okay. Um, have you ever uh, taken <laughs> taken God's name in anger or? used his name in of vain. Of course, of course I am. Okay. And even if, you, you know, I don't know like what you said, but even if it was something like, um, oh my God, some, you know, like using God's name as an exclamation mark is like, we wouldn't say our mother's name that way, you know, like we're just, we wouldn't, I'm you know, but why gonna, do we? I'm not going to agree with that. You might do the same thing to your mother, but then, but then I have did this too. I have went back and apologized because I, you know, you get mad and when you get mad, you say things. Now I'm a person that tries not to say nothing that I don't mean if I get mad, but yeah. it happens. Yeah. And I'll go back and apologize, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I'm not saying so apologize kind of, makes it right, but. So kind of right going through the 10 do. commandments, um, the Bible says you should not uh, uh, murder, but then Jesus was preaching about the 10 commandments and he said, you should not even, you should not murder, but you should not even call your brother a name in anger mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. call him a Absolutely. fool right. right Absolutely. and and if you do you're in danger of the fire of hell so mm -hmm. it's like don't even don't kill someone with your hands but don't even kill them with your words mm -hmm. something you've done called someone a bad name in anger i have everybody have i try not to because i, I i'm a person that knows that you control this mouth on your face so yeah. i try not to let nothing come out that i don't mean yeah. If I called you a X, Y, Z, you know what I mean? I, well, what good does that do? I, you seem like a done. pretty easygoing yeah, person, so I can't imagine it, but we all have our moments, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You ever right. get road rage? Uh, <laughs> the only time I'm pretty good with that, too, the only time I really get road rage, I mean, if somebody just really do something to put me in a position where they could get killed. Yeah. Like, just jump yeah. right there. The and I'll of bet you you still like don't, like, just fly off the handle with it. You know, a lot of times I try just not to... It don't bother me as much, you know, yeah. as much. Because, but you know, if it if they really put me in a position where I see that, man, that just you know, yeah. it, it gets to me at once in a while. But yeah. not knowing me, I don't. I'm just like you know, I, I hate to say it, but it's like if a person do something that bad, it's just between them and God. You know, yeah. I made mean, up something happens. I hate to say it that way, but it, the truth yeah. is the truth. That'll be like. Not just them, me on the other hand, you know what I'm right. saying, anybody else. So, right. You know. So kind of along with that same theme, Jesus said, do not uh, commit adultery, sex outside of marriage. But even, he said, even if you look with lust, you're committing adultery in your heart. So as one guy to another guy, guilty as charged. Oh, God. Yeah, who's not? <laughs> I wasn't man that's right. not. I don't know so, man that's not. So standing on, on judgment day before God, you know, you'd be found to be a liar and a and a thief, a thief and, and a, a blasphemer which is using god's name in vain uh, uh. you know murder at heart adulterer at heart you know guilty as charged oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah. so yeah. would you want god's mercy or god's justice everybody's gonna want day? god's mercy we want <laughs> god's mercy everybody I don't want so mercy. so the thing about god is god is completely just in other words there has to be a punishment for the crime that's justice means justice whole idea of justice must be served means like the balance the scale must be balanced if you commit the crime there must be a punishment right mm -hmm. and and so god is the perfect judge he wouldn't he wouldn't just like let us go just because we apologized you know like like right. if you were a, a thief in a or a, a, a hor horrible murderer i guess we'll say in a in a human court and you said to the judge judge i am really really sorry i killed that old lady you know the judge would say well you should be sorry and here's your punishment i mean if he's a good judge he wouldn't just say okay i see you're sorry you're right, free to right. go uh, exactly so so we do think we we do know that it's important to apologize to god and to whoever we've offended we need to apologize we need to confess our sins but 
that doesn't take away our guilt. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, so if there if the punishment must be paid, God will not just say, "Okay, you apologize, you're free to go." There must be a punishment for the crime. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, God is perfectly loving, and so. You know, as the judge, he says, you're guilty of this crime. There must be a punishment. But then he says, but as your heavenly father, I'm willing to take that punishment for you on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Almost like you ever get a, a fine, like a traffic fine. Right. If, if you're in the in the court getting ready to pay the fine, let's say it's a fine that's so big you can't pay it. Mm -hmm. Someone else comes in and says, judge, I, sh I sold everything I have and I paid this man's fine. Right. Mm -hmm. So... So the judge turns to you and says, well, Mark, do you want what they did? You know, they sold everything. They already paid the fine. Do you want that accredited to your account or do you still want to pay the fine? Now, our pride would say, well, I want to pay my own fine, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm, you know, but at the same time, he already sold everything he had and he already paid the fine. All we need to do is receive it and accept it. And that's what was done on our behalf, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, Jesus died for our, what? For our sins. Our right? sins. Yes. Uh -huh. He paid the fine. We did the crime, but he paid the fine. Right. right. So, so for me, it's like, okay, that was 2,000 years ago. Jesus died on the cross. It was long before, like, God knew about this, even before I was even born. Uh -huh. Of course, I'm going to receive it because I don't want to just ignore what he did for me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I want to somehow show my gratitude. So now I want to live for him and obey him and follow him. See what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, so what a lot of people get hung up on is they think, well, you've got to obey Jesus in order to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, no. That's why, I mean, we're sinners. We, we haven't obeyed Jesus. Mm -hmm. There still must be a punishment for our crimes. He took it and paid it on the cross for us. Now we can respond with gratitude and, and obey him and follow him. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. It does. So, um, so that's what I did when I was like in my late teens, um, mm -hmm. you know, committed my life to the Lord and, and, and trusted that what he did on my behalf was, you know, like, it's almost like the judge turned to me and said, Jeff, do you want to, do you want this to be credited to your, credited to your account? what I did for you on the cross. And I said, yes, sir, I do. And now I want to live for you, you know? Mm -hmm. So have you come to a point in your life that like maybe in, when you were young or at some point where you just said, you know, Jesus, yeah, I, I accept Jesus. He, I, I received what he did on my yeah, behalf. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe I, I just want to encourage you to remember that, you know, and mm -hmm. remember that, you know, like, he died for your sins and now you get to live for him you know mm -hmm. and um and and you know like this could be just a friendly reminder you know maybe god sent me today to mm -hmm. just remind you of what you've already done i think you know? the, i think the biggest problem that a lot of people deal with including myself <clears throat> it'll be the faith you know what i mean that that, that have keeping and maintaining that strong faith because you have so much stuff around you that happens you start losing faith and it's like man and yeah. so then you start questioning everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything that, that you hear and learn, or you start questioning it. It's like, man, you know what I mean? Why would you just start asking questions? I'm seeing people ask questions. Well, why would God allow this to happen? Yeah. Or why would he allow that to happen? You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest, the biggest problem. Yeah. People have more, they, 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 they uh, um, you know, they, they believe is, is, uh, it's just stronger than the faith, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's do you, like... Do you, from your childhood, you probably remember the story of G, uh, Peter walking on the water? Well, oh, Jesus was walking on the water first. And then Peter and the disciples were in the boat. And Peter said to Jesus, who's out on the water, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come out to you and I'll walk on the water too. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you remember what happened to Peter? Oh, no, that's so <laughs> what what happened was he started he got out of the boat he's walking on the water mm -hmm. he's looking at jesus he's coming towards jesus and then the wind and the waves got so big he's like looks around at all the waves and that's when he started to sink mm -hmm. and jesus mm -hmm. had to save him 
you know, uh -huh. he said, Jesus, save me. And Jesus reached out and pulled him out of the water, you know. Uh -huh. And um, I think that's exactly what you're talking about yeah. is like, uh -huh. like we, maybe you began to follow Jesus, but then you start looking around at all the, all the distractions Absolutely. in this Absolutely. life. And then all the, you know, the Bible says we, we have an enemy of our souls that's, that's trying to distract us. So it's not just, it's not just simple distractions that are, that just kind of come with life. It's like, there's an actual enemy who's trying to take, take oh, you away from you. Jesus, you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, I, I'm pretty sure you'd agree that he's probably doing a good job of it, right? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so the best way, you know, like the best way you can like keep your eyes on Jesus. And I think that's a good image to have in our minds. Is you know, like we're walking towards Jesus and then we get distracted. How can I keep my eyes on Jesus? That's to you know start reading His Word more regularly and get to church when you can and right, absolutely get involved somehow. Uh -huh. So, and as a truck driver, I mean, I know I do this. I listen to podcasts and like sermons and I have the Bible, like an app that where I can listen to the Bible. And, you know, so even while you're driving, you can be listening to things that'll build up your faith, you know. Uh -huh. So I want to I want to end with this okay. little story. There was a farmer who had two dogs and every weekend they would like get in uh like have a dog fight like with neighboring farmers and they'd bet on the dogs and uh uh the farmer was always right about which one would win you know and people asked him well how do you know which one will win and he said simple the one the one that i feed all week is the one i'm that that will win uh -huh. so in other words our faith is like that we need to feed it you know if right. we don't okay. If we don't uh, feed it, it's it's going to starve and it's going to be weak and it's going to, you know, it's Absolutely. not going to see us through the hard times. Right, right, right. So, <laughs> you got to feed it with positivity. Feed it with positivity and God's word and prayer and you know other mm -hmm. people uh, that can speak into our lives. You know, that's what that's what local churches are for. So, do you get you get home on off the road like for certain? regular times at all or? Uh, yeah yeah pretty good about it it might be a couple of weeks in between but get home for a few days or whatever and then oh, okay. leave back out yeah it might not necessarily when i leave be you know on the on the week i mean uh during the week it might be on the weekend i might you know get home thursday and then leave saturday or sunday or yeah something but it's not night. consistent from one week to the no. next okay that would really be hard that's yeah, it gets, it as, gets, as far as like uh hard for like to be have regular church involvement yeah, it is. you know because um, i was going to say like a lot of churches especially the bigger churches you usually have like small group bible studies throughout the week so even if you're not there on right, a sunday right, you can go right. to something you know mm -hmm. um but yeah if i were you i would try to listen to some podcasts and that be listening be, to some things you're right that'll that'll, help that'll, feed your faith i think it would because i spent a whole lot of time listening to crap yeah <laughs> And, and just know, to realize, like, a lot of those, I mean, um, the things, the, you know, like Discovery Channel and different things on YouTube or whatever that are claimed to find things wrong with the Bible, I, like, the main, I think their main motivation is money. You know, That's people right. are just, I think so they want to get a lot of clicks. And, and then the money is tight these days, so nobody wants to be giving it away, you know what I mean? Not for, yeah. you know, not for somebody else's pleasure, you know yeah. what I mean? You and, give it for somebody else. And there's too. there's enough people in the world that um, maybe have some kind of church background, but they're living a sinful life and they want to justify it. And so it's like anything that will help me to have less faith in the Bible, you know, they want to they want to see there's an appetite for things like that uh -huh. because they don't want to believe that the Bible's true. Absolutely, <laughs> you know? absolutely. So, well, I'm going to turn this off All and right. I'm going to ask how I can pray for you after sure. I do. Okay, so. Sure. And this will like